Open up your Bibles, please, to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13. All right, I'm going to talk about some deep stuff tonight. All right? Deep stuff tonight. All right, I'm going to talk to you about the rise of the 5G beast. All right? The rise of the 5G beast. Now, if you look at this chapter, we know that the Bible talks about a beast that rises from the sea. But... Here's the thing. We know that this beast is a person. He is a real individual. He's not just a nation. He is a real person. He is the Antichrist. But I wonder this. It, I can't help but read some of the passages. What if the Antichrist is a machine, a robot? But here's the thing. I can't deny Scripture. Scripture says, he, he, he. So it is a person. But I can't help to read uh, some interesting machine references. Then it dug into something that was really eye-opening. What if is the devil incarnate? Okay, so what if it is a real person but combines it with machinery? Wow. That's going to be big. And remember, you've heard uh, one crazy old preacher himself mentioning about Satan connected to electronics, electricity. Let's translate this as a robot then in Revelation 13. Shall we begin? Are the views going up? All right, Revelation chapter 13. We'll read verse 1. Picture this as a machine and a robot, okay? And let's make sure this is going on really well. Nothing bad happens, all right? Here we go. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Let's call that the 5G machine, all right? That's what a lot of people are concerned and panic about. And you see trends about that. 5G rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Look at the wording here. And the beast 5G, which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, that's Satan, gave 5G his power and his seat, and great authority. That would open up a huge, more widespread perspective, right? Let's keep reading right here. Look at uh, verse uh, 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after 5G. Wonder, amazement, look at this machinery, technology. Let's keep reading. And they worship the dragon, Satan, which gave power unto 5G. How about that? And they worship 5G, saying, Who is like unto 5G? Who is able to make war with 5G? Didn't you know that with uh, 5G and uh, where they advance to a, a greater G than that, that they're connecting war machinery with it? Didn't you know Elon Musk, he, his concern concerning about artificial intelligence, which is very heavy into 5G and then the next G after that, that uh, it would be connected to war machines? Mm. Let's keep reading. Think about it as artificial intelligence then, all right? Think about it as a machine. Think about it as 5G. Look how it would read then. And there was given unto 5G a mouth speaking great things. This is Alexa. How are you doing? This is Siri. Yes, I hear you. Mm -mm. Make a U-turn. Turn left. Blah, blah, blah. You hate that part the most, don't you? You made a wrong turn, you know. And blasphemies, right? And power was given unto 5G to continue 40 and two months. Wow, that would be incredibly eye-opening right here. Now, let's look at some of the references right here on how perhaps this could turn into a world of a 5G concept 
into a satanic triad or trinity and how machinery combines with man. All right, uh, let's look at Daniel 2, Daniel chapter 2. We see the iron machinery over here, right? But then notice right here, it mingles with man. Notice right here, it mingles with man. Look at uh, the book of Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. I told you I'm going to give you something big tonight. All right. All right. All right, look at Daniel chapter 2. And you hear this all over. A lot of people will talk about the iron mixed with what? Clay. Clay is human, but iron is non-human. All right. Look at Daniel chapter 2. I know who the iron is. Those are the sons of God. But imagine if they are through the machines. They are really machine themselves. And then you combine the biological world with the technological world. Is that possible? Let's go one at a time, all right? That is very possible. And I'll show you even spiritual too combined with that. All right, let's go, okay? Daniel chapter 2. We'll look at verse 42. Uh, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, whoever they are, shall mingle themselves with the who? Seed of men. See, iron mixed with clay. Clay is referring to human, but something iron is mixing with something human right here. Why? My, 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 my. Is that possible? That human and machinery will be mixed up when, when the devils produce that. Well, uh, let's look at the book of uh, Revelation chapter 17. And then Revelation 13. Look at both passages. Revelation 13 and Revelation 17. It's a strange book that you hold in your hands. And it's a strange world and times that we're living in. All right. Let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 17. There are these ten kings, ten demoniacs that joined the Antichrist. But notice what they have. The Bible says in verse 12, And the ten horns which, have, which thou sawest are ten kings. Now look at this. Verse 13, These have what? One mind, and shall give their power and strength unto 5G, the beast. That's eye-opening then. So does, isn't that what's going on with 5G? What they're doing is that through these 5G towers, towers, right? So through these 5G towers right here, kind of like this, right? Looks like an obelisk. Looks like a pyramid. Looks like a tower of Babel. Looks like a horn. The Bible says these ten kings, they have what? They have a horn, one horn for each king on top of their head. And they share one mind. And they give power unto the beast. Isn't this way more eye-opening than you thought if you put it that way? Now, I know it might sound a little crazy for now, but I'm going to show you how the demoniac realm combines with something technological. You'd be surprised how much those two things are one and the same more and more. They're different, but they're so intertwined. And I'm going to show you some interesting passages on that later on. But think about that then. The 5G, for some of you who don't know, what they're doing is that they're building these towers. And how you can do that is that it's not going to be like through these humongous towers that you currently get through uh, for 4G and all the other Gs. What they want is this, is that they want to make these little boxes and then put them uh, nearby, nearly where all the phone lines are. So basically uh, close, to any, uh, close to any pole that they could find. And then with these 5G towers that 
with and the 5G boxes and everything combined right here, then you can get really fast connection then. Rather than everyone dependent on a, on a cell phone tower where you don't get connection, where it's slow, but it'll be practically nearly every block, so to speak, these 5G things. So then we're all sharing this 5G, so you get more people who can access it, and you got way more speed as a result. So they're concentrating on the cities first, actually, and then reaching to the rural areas. But look at that right there. Isn't that interesting? So they notice this machinery is combined with something demonic. But let me show you Daniel 7. Daniel 7. Notice right here, if this is like a 5G tower or system, imagine how it would read through artificial intelligence. That's what artificial intelligence can become more accessible, can become more powerful, can become more advanced. The speech and the movement and then maybe they'll have their own avatar stuff coming out, you know, Siri with a face and then speaking to you. I mean, you got video games trying to do that now. So then imagine these things coming out and they speak through 5G, through the power of 5G towers. I wonder how Daniel 7 would read then. Daniel chapter 7. Notice right here the Bible says, at verse 7, the beast, right? So there's your 5G, let's say. Okay, let's call it 5G, the beast. And out of this 5G comes what? Verse 8. And I considered the horns. Hey, let's call this a 5G tower, all right? I considered the 5G tower, and behold, there came up among them another little 5G tower, before whom three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this... 5G tower were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. Artificial intelligence. What if it were to read that way? That'd be something right there with this AI. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I know that this is uh, uh, referring to uh, the Antichrist coming out through the horn, but then I'm going to show you how machine may be more combined with this person, this Antichrist, more and more and more. I'm going to show you more of that. Uh, it is intensely interesting when you see that through your scriptures. Wow. So then through all the power of the 5G towers. So let's put that right here. Let's put this as this uh, mouth. And then let's put this with the face. And then let's put this with something else. Revelation, go back to Revelation 17. Let's go back to Revelation 17. All right. And then check up again. Let's make sure that I'm still accessible online. No problem. So Revelation 17, Elon Musk said this. So the source that I'm talking to you about, Elon Musk, you can look it up yourself in your free time, but there is a video uh, from Inner Vision. Uh, title of the video is, I Tried to Warn You, Elon Musk's Last Warning, 2021. And his concern and fear was concerning about AI. And Elon Musk was scared about this uh, AI. He mentioned right here that AI can become more intelligent than us. Uh, so notice right here that from Elon Musk's concern about AI, he has a lot of concern about that. Fear. That they might become more advanced than mankind and they might take over mankind and they might rebel. What if they rebel against mankind and what if they have access to war machines too? That's even worse. Then the Bible talked about I showed you at Revelation 13, if you put 5G with that beast, making great war. That would be scary. And Elon Musk also said right here that the nations are going to be, uh, there's going to be wor a world wars where nations fight each other. Mm -hmm. Didn't the Bible prophesy that has to happen? At Revelation 6, 
the second red horseman comes out and the nations fight against each other. Wow. His concern is that AI is going to turn against mankind. Is that, does the Bible show something like that? Let's say that these are uh, 10, these are specifically 10 kings who have a connection to 5G and artificial intelligence. I wonder how this would read then. Look at Revelation 17, verse 16. And the ten horns, 5G, artificial intelligence working through 5G, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Wow, they betray. They betray the Vatican right here, actually. And that's going to happen in the future. The Vatican is going to be betrayed by these ten demoniac kings. But there's your, if they are tied to artificial intelligence, there's an example of how they turned against mankind. Wow, that's something. And then imagine, uh, if it's a mouth and a face, it's obviously an image. Revelation 13. Look at Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13. The Bible says right here, at verse 15, and he had what? Power to give life unto the image of 5G. That would be more realistic, more literal than you think then, what the Bible says. Image that moves, what? Should both speak. So notice right here that it's speaking, it's moving. There it is right there. Wow, that would be disturbing. Now, here's another thing right here about uh, uh, that might be more disturbing to you. 5G, if you think that's what the Antichrist is going to use, I don't believe that. So that's just a personal opinion. You might say, why do you put 5G right here? Because there's something more advanced than that. And, it's <coughs> and they're doing it. What's the Antichrist number? Look at Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Look at verse 18. Revelation 13, 18. The infamous 666, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. If this beast is 5G, he has a number. What's his number? For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. It's not going to be 5, it's 6. You know what I believe? I believe then the tribulation, it's going to be 6G, not 5G. And that's a personal opinion, obviously. It's going to be a 6. It's going to be a 6G. They're doing that right now. I mean, uh, this video will disturb you. It's from university. A secular universities are actually working on this right now. It's called uh, 6G Vision for 2030. That should scare you. 2030. This is from the University of Ulu. From the University of Ulu. But guess what? China, as I showed you in a different video, already launched its satellite, its rocket for uh, 6G. Crazy stuff. And I gave you the documentation for that. But here's the thing right here is that, uh, if that I believe that the Antichrist is going to use this one. And maybe, just maybe, he might not call it 6G. He might call it 666. He might call it that way. If we were to uh, look at this one right here, what is 6G capable of? If you look at that video, you know what they say right here? They're going to do biometrics, and when you sit on a train or a plane or wherever you travel, there's a biometric scan and they can tell from your face who you are, your identity. So there's no escape, there's no running. And then you got the 5G towers who are like practically on every block where people can access. When you put that into 6G where you can do biometrics, you can track anybody and that's scary. The current crisis, there was concerns about the disease that spread out and then they might be tracking through to tell who's safe and who's a danger.
to the public. The Antichrist, what does he want? If the Antichrist has a power like this, it's so easy what he wants to do. He wants to track down people who try to run away and escape from him, from his system, and then he wants to persecute and kill all of them. And he's going to use an image. The Bible says, this is so interesting, the Bible says the image not only causes uh, people to, be, uh, to worship, but to kill. Look at Revelation 13. Look at uh, Revelation 13 and verse 15 again. The image of the beast, right? The middle of verse 15, the image of the beast should what? Both, see that? Speak, so it's not just speaking. It's speaking and doing what? Cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. <sighs> Did you read that? The image both speaks and what? Kills. Make sure that people will be killed, persecuted. So persecution from this artificial intelligence. That's scary right there. So there's going to be persecution. Man, that's something. But look at Revelation 12. People are trying to run. They're trying to run away so that they don't find them. They're going to the rural areas, the wilderness, not the city. Why? Because 5G is practically prioritized on the cities, not in the rural areas. And then look at Revelation 12. They try to go to the rural areas. Why? To hide from the face of Satan. How about that? Look at Revelation 12. That's what it says. It says the face of Satan. They're trying to run away from what he's seeing, hearing, looking at from his face. How are you going to do that unless you get this kind of technology, right? An AI that goes all over. And its face covers everything. Biometrics, reading your face when you travel, when you ride trains. That's what they said in that video. So a Jew who tries to ride a train or a plane, and then they sit down in a chair, they go through biometric scanning. Look at Revelation 12. Look at this one. The Bible talks about a Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. And when the dragon saw he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. So we know that's Israel, and they're riding on a technology or an object that flies. So it's like an airplane to a rural area, wilderness. Why? Where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from what? The face of the serpent. How about that? How about that? From the face of the serpent. Now, this one, I'm just saying it's an interesting picture. So obviously, I don't believe this is true, but it's an interesting picture. Isn't it an interesting picture that when they try to draw these waves, from the cell tower, it looks like a snake or a serpent. And if you study the scientists who are studying the 5G, 4G, and then 6G and the advancement of that, they have to look at these uh, waves right here. Ooh. Deep stuff. All right, let's, uh, but that's just an interesting picture, isn't it? Interesting picture. But I'm going to show you a passage where Satan, who is the serpent, is in line with this electronic, with this electricity. So it may be more real than you think. But anyway, uh, one at a time, right? I keep saying that. So we see that the image, it persecutes, it chases down peace. People, there's nowhere to run or hide when you have this advancement of technology through 6G. And then when you get the mark of the beast at Revelation 13, going back to Revelation 13, the Bible shows right here at verse 18, that, that, uh, verse 17, and that no man m might buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. 
Notice right here that they have a mark in their right hand or in their forehead at verse 16. So they have to have it in the hand or in the head. And that is 666. Didn't you know already with 5G, you already have something in your hand that you're holding? And that's found in uh, another video is called Why 5G Will Change the World by Tech Vision. If you watch that video, it's, it'll show you that stuff. And not only that, it shows uh, the gaming of a virtual reality that you put on your head that covers your forehead. How about that? So it can cover your forehead right here. So that's 5G, not 6G. 5G. You know, 6G is going to scare you more. When you watch that other video that I mentioned about the 6G, you know what it shows about holding it in your hand? You can get a water bottle label right here. And this label on it, it's going to turn to a screen that pops out like that. Didn't you know that? And that's the goal of 6G is that you can touch electronic midair. So it's going to be like a screen that pops out. Imagine they put a wrist thing, right, with the label. Pops out. You can digitally access. 666, really close. Gaming, put on your forehead. Out of it, boop, screen. Don't believe me, watch those videos. All right, that's their goal. A guy putting on the headset and then the screen just pops out right in front of his forehead and then he's moving and accessing and then moves along with him. That's crazy. That's their goal for 6G. So knowing all these factors, man, it's crazy where our world will collide or get into eventually. But they're already doing that. Why? Because there's going to be self-driving vehicles and cars. And they want to do this, what they call Internet of Things. That's a very common term they use. And if you're going to advance in technology, it's going to be the, probably one of the most important terms you're ever going to hear. It's called Internet of Things. They call a lot of this about Internet of Things, where things are going to be part of the Internet now, everything accessed by Internet, which is very crazy and scary. Now let me show you something extremely interesting when we look at uh, all these passages about 5G and 6G, some of uh, other disturbing things. You know what I believe? How Satan can uh, access his world? This is going to be crazy. But before I uh, read it to you, I'm going to uh, read something from uh, Klaus Schwab and the goal of these people where they want to bring the fourth industrial revolution. Some of you have probably heard this already in my other videos, so I'm going to do it in this video. The goal is to combine biology with technology, okay? That's the goal of these people. So something biological will be combined with something technological. Mm. How about that? I'm not going to say the word. Okay, but anyway. All right. I'm just joking. YouTube, I'm just joking. It's called sarcasm, all right? Get a laugh, okay. All right, let's look at uh, uh, the World Economic Forum. If you look at their website, the title of their article is The Fourth Industrial Revolution, What It Means, How to Respond. From Klaus Schwab himself, the guy who's really heading this. He mentions right here the possibility of billions of people See, something biological. Connected by mobile devices. See, they're trying to have humans interact with technology more and more and more. With unprecedented processing power, storage capacity, and access to knowledge are unlimited. And these possibilities will be multiplied by emerging technology breakthroughs in fields such as artificial intelligence, robotics, the Internet of Things. Autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, nanotechnology, biotechnology, material science, energy storage, and quantum computing. 
Already artificial intelligence is all around us, from self-driving cars and drones to virtual assistants and software that translate or invest. Impressive progress has been made in AI in recent years, driven by exponential increases in computing power and by the availability of vast amounts of data. From software used to discover new drugs to algorithms used to predict our cultural interests. See, there are algorithms built to predict, to foretell and know what your interests are as a different cultures or societies. Digital fabrication technologies. Meanwhile, listen up. Digital fabrication technologies, meanwhile, are, present tense, interacting with the biological world. How many times? On a daily basis. Engineers, designers, and architects are combining, combining what? Computational design, additive manufacturing, materials engineering, and synthetic biology. Combining all of this to pioneer a symbiosis between microorganisms, our bodies, the products we consume, and even the buildings we inhabit. How about that? But uh, he says something of a pessimistic point of view and then a positive point of view. And both of them are actually predicted in your Bible, either way. So here's the pessimistic point of view that he mentions. He says, in its most pessimistic, dehumanized form, the fourth industrial revolution may indeed have the potential to robotize humanity and thus to deprive us of our heart and soul. Did you hear that? He's going to make us robots, this fourth industrial revolution. That sounds like a wonderful timeline to be in, isn't it? You know, The fourth industrial revolution that in its most pessimistic form, it's going to create something in its most pessimistic form where humans become robots. Or here's the most positive form, he says. The positive form, but as a complement to the best parts of human nature, creativity, empathy, stewardship, it can also lift humanity into a new collective and moral consciousness based on a shared sense of destiny. You know what he just said? He just says that uh, the positive side is that it can have a one-world value system of a one-world uh, humanity, of our one-world desire to become more humane. Why? That's Antichrist. One-world order. One-world government. And see... You know what? I'll tell you what's going to happen. Both of them will happen. All right? I'll tell you what will happen. Yeah, I'll predict it to you. All right? And that's found at Revelation 6 and 1 Thessalonians 5. The idea is this. He comes in with the positive form. Let's all unite together. Terms of peace. There's your positive side of the fourth industrial revolution. And then if this Antichrist is so robotic and machinery, which we saw passages that seem to show that, and this fourth industrial revolution will uh, unite our world together. Positive. But then as the tribulation passes by, it becomes its most pessimistic form where humans are robbed of their heart and soul after putting this on. And then they become robotic in mind and body and form, practically soulless. And then they become the Antichrist minions full of demon possession. And there's your most pessimist form of humanity where they become robotized. My, <coughs> my, 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 my. Let me give you something crazier than that. You ready for the thing? I don't think it's a symbiosis with biology and technology. You might say, what? But you pointed that out. No, I think it's, it's, it carries more than that. All right? Here's your wave right here, okay? This is... Uh, so we see how machinery is dictating right here, technology. We see the human side, biology. 
Wait, what's this side? Spirit, uh, right over here, spiritual. Or spirituality. And I don't mean the good spirituality. I'm talking about the dark side. It's going to be something demonic. His spirit, Satan's spirit, is going to combine with these two. That's why I can see machinery references with the Antichrist. And I know it's all spiritual, but I can't help to see something machinery inside those references too. So I believe it's going to not just be a symbiosis of these two. It's going to combine. It's going to be a triad of all three. Hmm, I wonder. Let's look at Revelation 16. Good teaching, brother. Revelation chapter 16. Let's say that uh, the Antichrist is a robot. And there's something robotic about the evil spirits, okay? Uh, about the false prophet, Satan, and the Antichrist. Let's say there's something robotic with these three, Okay? then if these three are robotic and they have a mouth that speaks great things and they're connected to the technology world, can they produce something biological out of that? One. Number two, can they do something technological where they can access the whole world and make sure they hear the news? Look at this. Verse 13, and I, see, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Notice something biological comes out. Something genetic, gross. But then uh, look at verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth. There's your technological, it looks like. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Look at that. But this is more spiritual. Why? Verse 14, for they are the what? Spirits of devils. I'll, I'll prove it with Ephesians 6. That verse alone is enough to prove it. Look at Ephesians 6. Look at the wording right here. This is crazy right here. This is very crazy. Look at Ephesians 6. Ephesians 2, excuse me. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Look at this. Now, don't Bible believers know in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, that the power of the air, that that's something technological, that's something electronic, right? Okay, look at this. Ephesians 2, 2, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the what? Power of the air. That's technological, but the Bible continues what? The what? The spirit. See, something spiritual is combining with something technological. But something biological comes out too. You got this unclean frog that comes out. Why will humankind interact with this spiritual technological? Yeah, keep reading. Ephesians 2, 2. The spirit that what? Now worketh in the who? Children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the what? Lust of our flesh. See? Biological. How about that? Man, that King James Bible will blow up your mind every time. It can, can get deeper than you think right there. So you know what I believe? All right? People don't have to believe this, but this is what I believe. I believe that in all these passages that we've seen, there is a, uh, there is, there are inferences of biological, technological, and spiritual all combined over there with the Antichrist and his demonic system. And it makes so much sense because uh, uh, even the scientists will admit it themselves that they mentioned uh, the, the connection of technological and biological. And by the way, if you keep researching, they'll even call it CRISPR. They had, today is their World CRISPR Day, for some of you who didn't know. You know what they mention right here? CRISPR and other people, they mention about, they use the words demons, devils, spirits, and we're reaching the spiritual world when they were doing technology. Whew. I believe all three. 
holy, 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 blessed Trinity, and they all bow down and worship that Antichrist. Man, that book will blow up your mind every time. Look at Revelation 9. Revelation 9. It's interesting that in World CRISPR Day today, and they didn't release the information yet, but some of my people who uh, attended the meetings over there, they mentioned that uh, world, uh, since it's World CRISPR Day, they called it uh, chimera. They, uh, they, called, uh, they were doing a study, and they used the term chimera of things. Why? Because perhaps the reason why is because how technology is combining more and more with humanity in a sense, and that we're interacting so much with uh, biology and technology. But then, uh, look at right here, the Bible predicts there will be a mingling of, uh, of human and something that's monstrous, the chimera. All right, Revelation chapter 9. Now look at right here. The Bible talks about out of hell, verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. All right, what do they look like? Look at verse 7, chimera. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates. Oh, it's kind of metal, right? Metal, right? Remember iron mixed with clay? Well, it's more clear, as it were breastplates of what? Iron. Remember Daniel 2? Iron mixed with what? Humankind. Clay. You see this case in Revelation 9. Iron mixed with human face. Women hair. Whew. All right, keep reading. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. Wow, how about that? That's what comes out of hell, the Bible says. These kind of chimera. But notice there's inferences of something technological and biological combined with something, what, demonic because it comes out of hell. Man, that's crazy stuff. If iron mixes with clay, and that can be something technological, you know what mankind will end up? they're going to end up as something that's uh, almost something soulless. And then they're going to come out as something very strange. They're going to be half man and half machine. And remember, they're, all well they're waiting for the aliens to come down, right? This year, we've seen too many reports from the government and intelligent agencies in public mainstream news. You can find that easily right now. I mean, they're, they're bold enough to release this. That, there's, that there are alien encounters. Even Obama admitted that too. And then scientists talked about life out in outer space. So when encountering these aliens, isn't it interesting in these alien movies, who we know are devils, right? Mm -hmm. Fallen angels, Nephilim, or et cetera, chimera, whatever you want to call it. Isn't it interesting when you look at these alien movies, they're mixed with machine? Predator, for example. Uh, Independence Day, all these alien movies, they combine with machinery. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Uh, your King James Bible is more enlightening than you, than you think right here. And you know what? Well, why are they doing all that, Pastor? It's to condition people so that when this really happens, it won't be a shock and they won't go... The Bible's real. The Bible's true. I'm going to get saved. And no, they're not going to do that. They're going to go, oh, this was something that was already told by universities. My scientists told me that before. The movies, I already saw this all the time. This was something that was collectively in our mind. And this is something that, uh, you know, because this is something that's a collective consciousness. And this is something that was told by psychologists. I mean, Carl Jung talked about some kind of universal consciousness or thinking, so this is what it is. This is not really scriptural. And they have every scientific explanation to explain it away on what is scriptural when they see, when you are so 
much in disbelief to why people cannot get saved, why can people cannot become safe Christians, it's simple. You condition people with this garbage. When you do that, then they're going to think, oh yeah, this is something we already knew. So, I mean, the Bible, the reason why it says that, it's because something that's collective within our human consciousness and see that? That's so deceptive. That's so powerful. More than that, that's so demonic. You want me to tell you something scary about what Elon Musk stated? He said this, AI can become a good thing. It's so fearful and it's going to outsmart us, but it can become a good thing. In what sense? He says this, if we can make it more humane. Remember what Klaus Schwab said, the positive realm? We make it more humane. And then if you look at 6G video, and then you look at Elon Musk's statement, he says, and we're seeing that humanity is becoming more one-on-one -on -one with technology. Why? So that we can have some sort of control still. Some human emotion soul can still be involved and etc. They're going to combine one. You know, you might still get away with it when you combine machinery and biology. Let's even give the scientists the benefit of the doubt. Let's say you can control. You think you're gods and you can do that. And then you can get away with it. You're not going to get away with the third factor. Yes, it's demonic. Not when you get this guy coming in. And when this guy comes in like a serpent, like a serpent, then this thing is going to take over. And then it just robs all of your inner being right here. Wow. How about that? You know how the tribulation saints conquer this red serpent? Look at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and chapter 7. Uh, look at Revelation 12, Revelation 12. It's interesting, sometimes when they study waves, they would sometimes study the heat, right? Something red behind it. It's kind of interesting. If, the, if you use this so much, it feels like red heat, right? So I'll tell you what's going to overcome this red thing. It's the red blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why the tribulation saints overcome it through that. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, nine, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Notice he's called red at verse three. See that? He's called red. What's going to overcome him? Look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the what? Blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. Can I teach you something interesting here? All right. Last part might blow you away. All right, we get 666, right? All right, what if this is all this red stuff, right? It's, uh, and that heats up, just like inside your cell phone, it like heats up. And you get this 666 mark and it heats up. Guess what it's going to turn to? Look at Revelation 14. You know what the Bible says? If you have the mark of the beast, it will turn into hell fire. And you will be damned for eternity. Revelation 14. The Bible says in verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, see that? And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So they're filled up with 5G, excuse me, 6G here. Excuse me, 666 over here. The same shall drink of the wine of the what? Wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. See, I see so much uh, technology right here. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. How about that? That's why people right now are freaking out about it. And that's why some people are cutting off their right hand or tearing stuff out of their forehead because they're afraid, did I receive the mark of the beast? No, that's future tribulation timeline. The application. Jesus talking about thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, 
right eye, if any, pluck it out. That's interesting to those references, right? The headset technology we put on our forehead, you're all seeing through the eye, right? And then the stuff that people are concerning about holding with their hands or putting in their hand. And Jesus says, cut off your right hand. Isn't that interesting? All of that is future tribulation timeline. So right now, don't, don't be afraid. Because in the church age, we're not in danger of this. We're seeing it happen, though. We're seeing it happen. We're seeing it prepare a way. But, you know, the Bible says that we will be raptured before the tribulation. Amen. And that Christ will take his bride with him. But if you're the person that gets saved during the tribulation, then you should get scared. Then you're going to be one of those people today who, made, who sadly and unfortunately did like this kind of stuff. So, guess what? That scripture is more alive than you think. And if you want to get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll tell you the best time to get saved is actually right now. There's no better time than to get saved right now in the Lord Jesus Christ and to not go through this awful timeline. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching was a blessing to the hearers and made us more aware about uh, our current situation, our current times, and how Scripture is being fulfilled and, and uh, being fulfilled and prophesied so that we don't become ignorant and we don't follow some of its uh, systems on preparing the way for the Antichrist. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.